when Lannis asked me to uh, do the communion thought, uh, I didn't realize it was going to be four nights of not being able to sleep because it went through my head. Um, but I will say this, if you're asked to serve, it's a wonderful opportunity because you learn so much. So if, if you have that chance, step in. If you need to help HB teach class, step in. It's amazing when you can't figure out why God's not blessing you, serve something and you'll be blessed. With that said, I kind of went to Luke 22, which is a, an account of the Lord's Supper. And Luke 22 starts off with Judas betraying Jesus. He's, he's going to tell him how to get Jesus, which is the first thing that uh, you would think would, would you think it'd be the last thing that would happen is that one of his own would betray him. They sat down and started the Passover meal, and uh, Jesus said, "This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me." And I want you to remember the word remembrance. Next, he took the cup and he said, "This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you." And then right after that. He indicates that Judas is going to betray him. He doesn't say that Judas is the one, but he says one of you is going to betray me. And then the disciples start arguing about who's the greatest. And Jesus has to say, the greatest is the one that's at the table being served, yet I'm the one serving the table. He's telling them, you don't get to be great because you're part of this. You get to serve because you're part of this. Then he told the third thing, which that Peter or Simon was going to deny him. So Jesus has just told them that his body has been broken for them and that their blood, that his blood is the new covenant and the people that most trusted to him are arguing about things. One of them's betraying him and the other's gonna deny him. Jesus has to think to himself, this is humanity. This is what, our, what we live in. The ones that know me the best have somehow not caught the story where it goes back to remembrance. Jesus didn't say, don't forget me because forgetting is kind of a non-action thing. But remembrance is an action thing. You have to do something to remember someone. I've thought through the week about people in our church that I remember, that I want to do things in remembrance of them because they were important to our church. But it also makes me want to do something that's important for Christ, which is go out and do what he taught the disciples to do that they had already forgotten. You go out and you serve others. There's miracles that I was involved with y'all. I have done so many things. I even cared about people that nobody else would care about. I went to Zacchaeus' house, which he was the most despised person. And I sat down with him when nobody else would. That is what remembrance is about. And as we take communion this morning, remember what God gave to us in his son. And not only the sacrifice that he provided for us, but all the wonderful things he did to show us how to live. If you'll pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come and remember you. To remember all the wonderful things that you've done. The gifts that you've given us the knowledge that you gave us, showing us how to love one another, not just telling us to, but showing us how. Thank you for your sacrifice that gave everything of you so that we may live forever in heaven with you. Thank you for all of our, our Christian brothers that are here with us today and the ones that are out in the world. We pray that uh, we will be unified and we will be one in Christ. Thank you again for this sacrifice of your son. As we take this 
communion bread and this communion wine, we pray that it will remind us always to serve and to love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.